Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about the Sony A7S 3 and everything I'm going to say in this video also is going to apply to the new Sony FX3. Now the reason why I haven't done a video about this camera or why I haven't even really talked about it or mentioned it in any of my other online posts or things like that is because uh, this is, you know, one of those products that comes out where pretty much everybody who does any kind of reviews online uh, has already talked about it. So I didn't feel like I had anything really new to add to the conversation. But just in case you're one of the few people who uh, who's looking at getting possibly a new video camera, uh, and, but you don't know anything about th this particular model, uh, I guess I can kind of uh, do a sort of a quick recap. So first of all, the thing that makes this camera stand out, I think, uh, above every other camera that I've used so far is that it's sort of the the most well-rounded kind of a camera. Uh, this is a hybrid full-frame mirrorless camera that can record 4K video up to 120 frames per second, uh, and it can also do uh, HD video up to 240 frames per second, so you'll get really nice slow motion. Also, it can record internally in 10-bit 422, uh, and it has full HDMI out uh, connection that allows you also to export 16-bit raw signal. On top of that, this camera has built-in image stabilization that is, uh, I think, one of the best. And also, it has one of the, the, the best uh, autofocus system. So, a lot of great things. So, if you're looking, for example, for a camera that uh, you can single-handedly operate for, let's say, live events or things like that, where you're going to rely on autofocus or you're going to rely on good image stabilization so you can handhold the camera and things like that, uh, you know, we get something that is also going to give you cinematic image quality with really high bit rates or even raw capabilities, then this is the camera for you. Uh, now, it's not a camera for everybody. And that's sort of maybe one of the reasons why I didn't talk about this camera or I haven't done really a review and I haven't really shown really any examples of kind of what, what I've kind of shot with this camera. One of the reasons or one of the things that you should maybe consider before jumping in and getting this camera is uh, are you going to be shooting with full frame lenses? And I, I would say that's a big question you should ask yourself. Now, if you're looking for a full frame video camera, then this is definitely one of the cameras you should look at. Uh, but if full frame shooting isn't something that you're going to be exclusively doing, uh, then that's probably one of the, the biggest reasons why you don't want to get this camera. And I'm saying this simply because if you're going to throw on a lens that's not full frame, then yes, you do have an option in this camera to uh, jump in and basically shoot in super 35 millimeter crap mode, but that is only available in uh, HD. So suddenly a lot of those reasons why you know, you'd be getting a camera like this are basically just not applicable. And the, the reason why that is basically the sort of, a, I guess you could say a limitation in this camera uh, is because of, I guess Sony had to kind of pick the, the you know, the, the lesser of the two evils. They put in a 12 megapixel uh, image sensor in this camera, which is not the highest resolution, but that will uh, give you an amazing low light performance. And that's maybe another thing that uh, you could say is amazing about this camera. It has probably one of the best low light performance uh, you know, sensors out there. Uh, but because of that lower resolution, uh, it means that if you wanna actually shoot in super 35 or basically cropped image sensor, uh, then there's just not enough resolution in there uh, to output a 4K video signal. Uh, and so that's why, you know, this camera is sort of limited in that sense. Uh, so definitely something to consider because like me, for example, I've had this camera, but I'm not somebody who likes to always shoot with full frame lenses. And so for a lot of projects or a lot of projects that I've had, especially recently happening, um, I, I didn't want to carry around big full frame lenses. Also, I don't really have any good uh, full frame, you know, fully automatic lenses. So I didn't use it for that. I do have some good full frame manual lenses, but then those I usually kind of tend to use with my cinema cameras. Like for example, my favorite right now is the, the Zikim uh, F6 uh, camera. And so again, like I said, nothing really wrong with this camera unless you're not going to be really, you know, planning to be using full frame lenses. If you're not doing that, then 
suddenly this becomes a very outdated camera simply because it's it's you know only allows you to shoot in HD. Now of course if you don't care about shooting in 4K, uh, if HD is good enough for you, then uh, there's plenty of other choices and a lot more affordable choices uh, that you, you should probably look at. So that, that's what I'm saying is like if you're gonna look at this, you're probably looking for a full frame mirrorless camera that can shoot 4K really beautiful you know quality uh, images uh, or video I should say um, because it is even though obviously it's a stills camera it can do stills also, also again because of that 12 megapixel image sensor it's not the best stills camera because there's other ones out there with much much higher res resolution image sensor um, but yeah otherwise uh, you know it's kind of that's what I'm saying it's kind of hard for me to do a review on this and say all oh, these great things because you know and say basically it's a camera that everybody out there should get because yes in a way this camera has really nothing but great things that i can say about it but at the same time there's the one thing that can really limit you again if you're not somebody who owns or or plans to shoot and with uh, with full frame lenses so yeah something to consider now outside of that like i mentioned 4K, 120 frames per second, 240 frames per second in HD, 15 stops of dynamic range in, in shooting and video. I mean, amazing low light performance, stabilized image sensor, amazing out of focus. Like, you know, just things to really just be, you know, raving about this camera. I mean, it pretty much has everything, and that's why I'm saying it's sort of a, the best all around, kind of well rounded camera out there right now on the market and and when it comes to just purely the image quality and i'm actually saying this because previously with some of the other sony cameras for example i just i mean i loved a lot about you know sony cameras in the, in the past but the one thing that always sort of held me back was their color science it was you know it wasn't as big of a problem as maybe some other people complain because i find like in color grading you can really tweak any image and make it look good but uh yeah i gotta say that with this camera they've really stepped it up the, the colors and the image profiles that they've had basically you know in this camera i, I really kind of take i would say you know sony to a completely other level anyways hopefully this video was helpful for you guys if it was let me know in the comment section below and as always if you want to see more content from me whether it's camera reviews filmmaking tutorials that kind of stuff then head on over to my website at tomantosfilms.com and uh and subscribe to my newsletter so you you're notified when i release any other future videos posts and things like that about uh cool new gear or or uh, some some tutorials and stuff like that oh one last thing i forgot to mention as a flip out screen yay sony finally <laughs> anyways that's it for this video bye guys